Are you wondering how to mount your camera for Octoprint and Octolapses? Well, today I've got a free 3D printed solution that's flexible enough to go where you want, yet strong enough to hold in place. I'm a really big fan of 3D printing with Octoprint and an even bigger fan of 3D printing with Octolaps. What am I talking about? Well, Octoprint is a Raspberry Pi installation that runs your printer and Octolaps is a way of making those awesome time-lapse videos where the print magically appears out of nothing. Now, it's been a long time since I first promised my guide on how to make great Octolapses and there's a reason for that. There's been a lot of research and development up to this point and I think now I'm almost ready to release it. Now I have played around with Raspberry Pi cameras, but ultimately I found webcams a lot easier to configure and physically mount. My needs for my videos are 1080p, so I've researched and found two webcams that I can recommend for this purpose. The first is the Logitech C930E, but it's certainly not cheap. The second is the Chinese HXSJ S70. Quite a mouthful, but coming in at about half the price and still offering full HD capability. Most of my Octolapses on the channel so far have been done with a cheap little tripod mount and the camera mounted on top. That's been okay, but I felt limited in the types of angles I could make Octolapses from. I was inspired by these flexible tripod mounts and thought I could do a webcam mounting system in much the same way. In the end, I feel like I've designed a really user-friendly and functional solution, but it hasn't always been like this. Let me take you through my design process and explain how my system works. I started by designing and printing this simple clip that neatly clipped onto the 2020 extrusion as found on Creality and a lot of other 3D printers. With a little bit of a wiggle, it comes off just the same way. I then found this part on Thingiverse, scaled it up and designed some parts to interface with my little clip and a camera mount on the other end. And it did work some of the time. Trouble was, after a little while, it went very floppy. The internal surfaces wore down and it just wouldn't hold its position. What does that look like inside an Octolapse? Well, pretty disastrous. When I first put this together, this needed to be hammered on and everything was incredibly tight, but over time it wears and then it becomes quite floppy. I knew I needed to head another design direction. I turned back to Thingiverse for inspiration and I found this locking ball and socket arm. Trouble was it was really small. I printed it at the original scale to begin and you note that the design works by having a little nut that rotates sideways to grip the arms around the other ball and socket. It even came with this little set of spanners to be able to do this. The problem was, however, when I put it together, it seemed like it had a fair amount of tension, but the tools weren't strong enough to twist and activate the mechanism. No matter what I did, it would just slip, and I think I would need to use a metal spanner to get anything to work properly at all. Nevertheless, I scaled it up to 200% and reprinted it to see if that would be any better. Here's the larger parts. They slot together firmly, but once again, the tools for the locking ring are simply not up to the job of locking it together. Maybe other people have had more success with this design, but for me, I thought it was clear that I was going to have to design my own part because this simply wasn't going to work. At this point, it seemed clear that these existing designs were great for their intended application, but they just weren't going to work for me. I needed to design my own solution, so I came up with some criteria for success. I wanted to be able to print with no support. I wanted the locking system to prevent slop, but I didn't want any tools to be required. I wanted user-friendly assembly so you couldn't get halfway through and realize that you've done something wrong and have to pull it all apart. I wanted it to be suitable for multiple webcams, suitable for multiple printers, and have options for various printer tolerances to suit people with cheap and expensive printers alike. I feel confident that I've hit the mark on pretty much all of those, so let me explain to you how my new system works. We start with our base and we have three options. We have a 2020 base for Creality printers and other ones that use the V-Roll system. We have a Prusa i3 base that fits on my Mark III. And we have a generic base for your own designs. You've already seen how the 2020 base clips on, but keep in mind that you can clip it on the top or on certain printers like this Tipo Tornado down the bottom so it's very flexible in its usage. Now I modeled my Mark III base off the spool holder. It comes down from the top and then the bottom clips into place. And finally we have the generic holder, which has four mounting holes on the bottom, dimensioned as you see here. This means you can design a mount for your own printer and simply screw it on with the four bolts to this part. Next we have the link, that's the same for any printer, and we have three options for the locking ring, loose, mid, and tight. Let me explain. The very first thing you should do is to print two links and two mid locking rings. From that point onwards, Slide it into place from either end and lock it down and see just how tight it is. If it's too tight, print the loose version. If it's too loose, print the tight version. Whatever the tolerance of your printer is, hopefully one of these three versions will have you covered. And if it turns out there's enough demand for another version, I'll make that too. 
Our final part is the camera mount, and again, we have multiple options. The two webcams shown at the start of the video are catered for. Let's start by looking at the cheaper Chinese version. The part for this camera is designed to fit directly onto the camera with the base removed. So the first thing you need to do is pull it open and then use a small screwdriver to pull off the little cover that holds the screw in place. Once you have both sides off, use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove it as well as the nut on the other side and you should be able to slide out the locking pin, therefore removing the camera from its base. Slide it onto the printed part, reinsert the sleeve and then the locking screw on the other side. And optionally, after everything is back together, you can reapply those little stickers to hide the screws. This should allow the webcam to be swiveled just like it was originally intended for a very neat install. On to our second option and it will suit any camera that has a tripod mount. All you simply need to do is insert the screw, possibly with a washer from underneath, and tighten it till it stays in place. Once again, the webcam should be free to swivel and move so you can make fine adjustments after the whole thing is mounted to the printer. Here's the setup I ended up with, with my Mark III. Now, if you're using a webcam without a tripod mount or you just don't have the screw, I've got you covered as well. Those ridges on the bottom are to hold a cable tie or rubber band from sliding off. You can simply tension it around and you should be able to mount pretty much any webcam you want. Well, that's how it all works. I hope you agree that there's options for pretty much everyone. Once you've decided on your options, you can load up a plate of all your intended parts. They should print successfully. You can pop it off and start your assembly. Revisiting that criteria for success, I'm pretty sure the only one I failed is needing support for the Mark III version of the base mount. Highlights for me are the user-friendly assembly because you can mount the locking ring from either side of the assembly, meaning you won't get stuck halfway through if you get to pre-mount one. As for the strength, well, this new system is strong enough to hold the complete old one without any slippage at all. Now, I'm not saying my system is perfect and one caveat is the fact that these locking rings go on quite tight you have to push them with quite a bit of force to be able to unlock them and make adjustments. You can overcome it with brute force, but I'd be very wary of wearing it down and losing the rigidity that makes it work so well. The good news is because it's modular, if anything wears out, you can simply reprint that individual part. That's gonna wrap this one up. Hopefully you found it useful. Comment below if you're interested in this system. The good news is that I'm one step closer to releasing my Octolapse guide, especially now that the newest version has been released. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.